when it got to the winter time, now we've got a different cup of tea. We've got water in the bottom of the shelter <laughs> where the, when the rain started coming. It, it used to soak in and we'd had about two inches of water. So we all looked as though we were going to die of pneumonia, never mind about the bombs, you know. So we, we thought, my father being a very educated man, <laughs> he said, uh, we're not going to have none of this. We'll dig this up and we'll put it in the house. It was one of its kind. I mean, I don't know of anybody else that did this, but I should imagine there were. So we dug the shelter up during a quiet period. We had quiet periods, you see, where we didn't have too many raids. So we dug this shelter up and we cleaned it all off with the hose and, and we put it in the house at the side of the fire. Great. Under a little alcove about this, about that much. And we put it under there and it just fitted beautifully. And we screwed the tops in and there it was. My mother and father, because I wasn't allowed to sleep upstairs at all, nobody slept upstairs, not during the raids. We had to go down into the shelter. Well now we still we couldn't go into the shelter. My mother father slept in the shelter each night because you must realize that every night we had a warning go yes. we didn't get very many nights mm -hmm. over that first year that we didn't get a warning go um, it was at least a hundred nights right off the trot without any help at all you know because every time the warning went you had to protect yourself you had to go in, into the shelter don't matter where it was we used to use under the stairs we would uh, all sorts I mean you know people used anything where they felt safe so, anyway, to get back to this shelter, and it stayed there until we took it down the war, until the, the war had practically finished, we, we kept that shelter there. Mm. But I fortunately got permission to, to sleep upstairs. While this shelter was downstairs, my mother and father had to sleep in the shelter. But I could go upstairs unless it was a bad night. My mother's words, not mine. She used to give the, the signal if it was a bad night. In other words, if bombs were falling and guns were firing, it was a bad night. So I would have to come down and she would put me in front of the fire on a make-up bed, uh, like on the floor sort of thing, in front of the fire, right near the shelter, which was about three feet from the shelter entrance. This one night I was down there, it was a bad night. Down I goes and I'm sleeping away. All of a sudden, crash, bang, what the heck? She's, my mother's screaming at me, Stan, Stan, come in here, come in here. So I starts to crawl towards the shelter because it's all dark, you see. My father's found his torch, he's shining it from the inside, outside, so as I can see where to go. I get near to the door and she goes, go back, go back, go back, you're covered in soot. <laughs> this chimney had been blown off, the top of the chimney had been blown off with the blast and shut all the soot down the chimney. All over me, who was sleeping in the front of the fire, was that for that second, it just went poof all over me. I'm so frightened of it because I can't, it's everything so dark, you see. It's mother screaming come into the shelter, which was in, you know, two feet away. And I'm trying to crawl towards the shelter like this. And she's telling me, don't come in, you're coming in. So, well, we started laughing. And um, before we could get them, me cleaned up and everything else cleaned up, the, board, the, the raid was over, sort of thing. Um, during the Battle of Britain, I can tell you one story. Uh, the people were very uh, conscious of the fact that uh, German parachutists were uh, could land at any time. Um, they could be um, fifth columnists. We used to call them fifth columnists. Um, they were they, they was a bit of a scare went round when uh, at that time. Um, so there was no, it wasn't unusual to see people walking about looking up if there was a raid on or something like that. In fact, we had a parachute land in uh, the local, uh, where the local football fields were about a couple of miles away from us. And this parachutist came down and the men that were available went out with pitchforks and cr clubs and God, so God knows what. And they said to him, and I gestured to him to put his hands up, you see. Um, this is not just a story, this is a, it's actually happened. Um, it's a story, I'm, now I'm telling it's a story. but. He, he's, he's going with this uh, accent, you see, and he's got his hands up. They march him two miles down to the police station with these pitchforks and all the what. When they get down there, he's a Scottish Spitfire pilot been shot out of his plane <laughs> from Hornchurch just down the road. I mean, he's gone up and he's gone, 
And he said, oh, he's, got, he's not a Cockney, we'll put him down the police station, he must be German. And that was where he was, two miles they marched, the poor little bugger down there, you know. And he put these flying boots on and everything, and he's only just been shot down out of the sky, protecting us. 